I'm Yardar, and this is The Catch. It's only 10 degrees outside, but we're going diving for scallops in Eastport, Maine. Eastport is on Moose Island. It's the easternmost city in the United States. That's Canada right there across the bay. In the 1700s, it was the second busiest port in North America, second only to New York, and it was fish that the traders were after. By the late 1880s, the town had 13 sardine factories operating night and day, producing 5,000 cases per week. 800 men, women, and children worked in the canneries. The town thrived. Today, the principal industries are harvesting scallops and lobster and farming Atlantic salmon. As the sun rose the next morning, the air was 10 degrees and the water a balmy 40. Good morning, Paul. Morning. Nice to see you. What are we doing today? Oh, we're going to go diving out Prince Cove. It's 12 degrees out. Seasonable. All right, well, I'm in. All right. It's freezing. I'm an experienced diver, but Cobbs Cook Bay in the winter? The below freezing weather was admittedly a test. Although it's not as productive, the advantage to diving is you can get into areas that, that are too tight or too constricted, or if there's, if there's hangs and you can't tow a dredge through it, you can dive and pick up the scallops. The air is 16, the water's 40. Working that. Oh, yeah. So the productivity versus dragging is, is so much so much lower, right? Oh yeah, we're I mean, gonna we, be. We would have been done by the time you're suited up if we were dragging. Yeah. The Department of Marine Resources, who regulate the fishery, allow dragging three days a week. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are designated for divers. Captain Paul is one of only 10 boats up here licensed to fish using both methods. Statewide, there are about 350 active drag boat licenses and 45 diver licenses. As I descend to 25 feet, the visibility shrinks dramatically. It's dark in the murky water, but the water is much warmer than the air, so that's comforting. Captain Paul has the same goal today as yesterday, to harvest 90 pounds of meat, but today he works alone, in the dark, and very much by hand. He feels for each scallop. The harvest will take several hours underwater. Scallops can be found living within rocks, rubble, seagrass, kelp, sand, shellhash, or mud. It takes a very experienced eye to spot them and harvest them with the speed that Captain Paul can. Scallops spawn in late summer. Rapid growth occurs within the first several years and they reach commercial size at four to five years old. Lifespans can extend to over 20 years. When they sense the presence of a predator, like a starfish or urchin, they can try to escape by swimming erratically through the water using propulsion by clapping their shells together. With 300 species, scallops are found in all of the world's oceans, but never in fresh water. They're one of the few groups of bivalves to be free living, capable of migrating across the ocean floor. Scallops have a well-developed nervous system, and unlike other bivalves, they have a ring of numerous simple eyes around the edge of their mantles. They can't see shapes clearly, but they detect changing patterns of light and motion, so it's an early warning system, scanning for the shadows of predators. According to marine resource regulations, I'm not allowed to harvest without a license, so my time down here is done, but it was great to dive again after a year of no travel allowed. Here's what's for dinner, true Maine diver scallops. I love, love eating a scallop, I call it myself. What's more satisfying than this? I almost look like I know what I'm doing when I'm shucking it. So this will be really cool to really taste the taste the sea where we got it. Mm. I 
nice salinity on the front end. Super sweet. Mm. That is amazing. Yesterday, in a, in a six minute drag, we got about two times as many scallops as he just got in 15. Wow, those are nice big scallops. Look at that. The beauty of this is there'll be no sand in them because they haven't gone through that dredge. They just picked up right off the bottom. So it'll be really clean. And what they're doing right now is they're trading bags. He's gone down with an empty bag and the, the tenders are gonna pick up the full bag and they're gonna shuck them right on that boat. They're not allowed to switch boats with the scallops because that's how people cheat. So once the scallops go on that boat, they have to stay on that boat. Another regulation around diving is that the divers and the tenders all need to be uh, CPR and first aid certified or they can't get a tender's license. Dayboat diver scallops. A misconception about diver scallops is that they're very large. It doesn't have anything to do with the size. They're named for the harvest method. Diving for scallops is as old as fishing itself, and it's gentle on the environment. Hand diving is a low impact, sustainable method. After three hours, three tanks of air, and eight descents, Captain Paul has single-handedly reached the legal limit. Paul, that was incredible. I can't, I can't believe you were down there for three hours. Yeah, it's a short day today, really. <laughs> it's a short day. It's not easy to do what you do. It was, I, you know, to, just to see those scallops, they're, they're buried in there. And if you, don't, if you don't see that tiny little edge, you, you, I don't know how you do it. And I, and I had the advantage of the lights from the camera. Yeah. I, I don't know how you do that in the dark. Today actually was decent visibility. Really? So today was an easier day? It's better visibility than what we've had. And you know, when I compare it to what we did yesterday with the dredge, I think we, we towed that dredge around for maybe, it was maybe it was on the bottom for 30 minutes, 35 minutes total bottom time, yeah. and, and, and we limited out, and we, we could have been back at the dock in an hour and a half, but today, you know, you're, you're putting in, you know, just three hours in the water alone. It's a bonus yeah. day. It's a bonus day. Okay, I'm glad you see it that way, but I'm just blown away that you could spend three hours in that water and, uh, Still come up with a smile on your face. <laughs> oh, it ain't bad. Yeah, all right, let's do it again sometime. We got our limit. Yep. Yeah, Another yeah, you day. got your limit, and, and we're ready to ready to wrap it up. Yeah. All right, thanks for having us, Paul. Yeah, really appreciate it. We head back to Eastport Harbor, fully loaded. Then I'm headed home to my fish market in Connecticut, with 90 pounds of Captain Paul Cox's diver scallops, and the first-hand story of their origin, to share with my customers. Why is it important that we only eat sustainable seafood? Because we now know that everything we do has an impact on the planet. We can feel better when we know our dinner doesn't leave a deficit in the planetary budget. I'll see you next time on The Catch.